Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. Ooh, you know what time it is. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get the air horn for this. Let me get the air horn for this. You know what fucking segment we about to get into? We about to get into the sad segment. Let's go. Ooh, and I had to go over this show four seasons in. I've been watching since the beginning. Oh, my goodness. Lena, thank you for creating this show, The Shy. Uh, give you another air horn for this, man, The Shy. Such a great show. It came out December 5th, 2017. Like I said, it's in its fourth season. This shit is smacking. Look it. You know I got to get a statistics because, you know, when it comes to the SAS segment, I'm a stats teacher. So that's how we're getting into it. IMDB gave it 7.4. What? <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes gave it 87%, which makes it fresh. Man, fuck these critics. Both these numbers should be higher. Fuck all that. You know what I mean? But I already told you who the creator was. Lena Waif. And it stars Alex R. Hibbert. Yolanda, the beautiful Ross. Oh, she's such a fucking beautiful woman. Good Lord. Yolanda, I know you ain't gonna watch this, but people that do watch this, can y'all please retweet? Yolanda Ross, you are fucking beautiful for me. Help your boy out. And then there's many more. It is, su it is such a great cast. So many names, you feel me? They even got Lala in this motherfucker. Man, she is dope. Basically, the premise of the show is basically a neighborhood in the south side of Chicago. And they follow, like, the main characters are these uh, teenage boys. Did they start off 10? I think they started off 6th grade, maybe? Maybe 5th? I think 6th, though. And they're following them around. Um, And they going through, they be going through their own shit, you feel me? Papa, he preacher boy, you feel me? He, he working with one bruh. And that nigga going through shit with his goddamn marriage. His woman's like, yo, I want to open open marriage relationship. Which she deserved. This nigga fucks everything. This nigga be fucking up. And he fucked his goddamn partner slash co-worker that she cool with. Now she was like, you know what? Fuck you, nigga. I'm about to go get some new D. And she did. Now she went to open marriage relationship. But now they got all these rules. But anyway, other character. Damn, I'll be forgetting bro name, but this this little nigga gangster though. He he with the thug shit though. But he going to school with Kevin, which is like an all white preppy school or something like that. So like his uh is not his father figure, but like bro like kinda adopted him, but he's running for the mayor of Chicago. And this nigga's the ultimate gangster. This is my favorite character. But like, bro Donovan got him into the school, but this nigga thug with it though, and like him running as mayor, all this nigga's gonna get assassinated. Cause he's all about the black back black power shit. He all like, man, fuck these cops. I don't give a damn. Fire this nigga. Fuck this nigga. You work for me. Who the fuck are you talking to? That's his attitude. He all about helping the community. And watch the community end up killing this nigga. So season four. I'm on episode probably five. Then um the uh the dude. That owns a little chicken shop. His mom ended up having cancer. Just, just told her son this past episode. Yes, in the black community, cancer run rampant. You feel me? So she's fighting an aggressive stage of cancer. And it's like, damn. The character that Yolanda Ross, uh, Ross plays, she ended up having like cancer and shit. And then like her having her one friend that goes with her other friend. This a lesbian couple, but she's withholding information from her fucking, uh, this her wife and shit. And now it's causing a rift. And the wife is the other character I want to get into, Kevin. He's another one of the little boys. It's his mom. And his character is probably the most interesting character. And he's going through what a lot of black boys go through. I went through the shit. Like, uh, in the first episode, him, is one gangster partner I was telling you about, and like Papa, they was all there. They had an encounter with the police. You know what I mean? Police draw their fucking guns on him. 
It traumatized him. Yes. Motherfucker in the goddamn, I think like, they in the eighth grade now. Got a gun pulled out on one police. Y'all know the first time I got a gun pulled out on me by the police? And y'all probably ain't gonna believe it because it sounds fucking ridiculous. But it's fucking true. I was 11 years fucking old. 11. First time the police. You See what I'm saying? The first time? Because it ain't the last time that it happened. That the fucking cops drew their fucking weapon at me. 11 years old. Trauma. So like, yes, he's traumatized. He's not talking about it. It's fucking trouble going on in the in in the home. Last season, his sister was fucking kidnapped and was getting like molested and shit like that. And like he was worrying about that in that household. And like with his sister, like she's pregnant, and like she's like trying to find a foster home for her kid. So she's going through that, and it's like. I don't know, it's a lot of trauma going through in that crib. And, like, he not telling her. He got his girlfriend and, like, he kind of being rude to her. But it's like he's not able to express himself right now. He's feeling he's feeling trapped. And he's feeling like a lot of people was on his back and pressuring him instead of just being like, I'm going to sit here with you. I'm not going to bug you about it. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for you to talk. But I just want to sit here and be in your fucking presence. And let you know that I'm here for you. And that's what a lot of black boys just be really needing. They don't need the, all the talk all the time. Like they we will like they will express themselves when they're ready. And most of the time they just want somebody there that cares for them. And just sit there and just don't even need to talk, just talk about something. Basketball, video games, something something that interests him. And that's what's going on. So he going through all that turmoil and then like the latest episode, he basically told his like his mom and you know his uh his other stepmom basically his other stepmom basically is like yo I just want y'all to just be proud of me just say you proud of me just like just see that I'm trying out here and he hasn't told him that the cops put the gun out on him yet but like you know and then she told the mom told him like yo. I almost lost my daughter. I'm not trying to lose you, which is his sister. So she's fucking terrified. And this gave me just greater understanding of just like, you know, my grandmother and shit. She always bugged me about it. Call me when you get when you when you leaving somewhere or call me when you on your way home or call da, da. I always was like, man, I don't wanna hear that shit. What the fuck? I'm gonna be safe. Not knowing like, yo, niggas was getting killed. Niggas was getting shot. Niggas was getting kidnapped. All types of wild shit was happening where I was growing up from. And just to, like, know now, like, damn, my grandma was just more terrified than anything. She was scared for my fucking life. She just wanted to know if I was all right. And that's what his mom was telling him. And he was like, I just want y'all trust. And then... You know, she was like, I trust you. They both, like, we trust you. But then it's bringing a rift between his friends because his friends, they at, at an all-white preppy school. And these motherfuckers don't care about no goddamn racism. And his girlfriend is trying to make the protest and have it all. And he's like, yo, I just got on a straight and narrow with my, with my mom's and shit. Like, she's trusting me and shit. Like, I don't want to break that. And it's causing a rift between them. And it's like... You know, is one partner looking at him like, man, you acting like a bitch. And it's like, what you do, man? Like, this nigga, like, he going through shit, bro. This is what little black boys go through, bro. That's what I go through. You Like, when, when I was little, I went through this shit. You feel me? And it's like, you lose friends over this shit. You lose all types of shit. And I already see it. I'm like, dude, down the, lo- down the road, down these episodes, this nigga is going to end up, he's going to lose, every, like, damn near everything. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's fucked up. But, um, yeah, man, it's so, it's so much more shit that goes on with this, uh, with this show. I don't want to spill it all. Like I said, when it comes to these sad segments, movies and films, I don't want to give it all away. I want to give, you know, some juicy points so you get interested. Like, oh shit, I gotta go see it. 
then you go watch the show. But go watch the previous season so you understand what the hell's going on. Because it's not really a show. You can hop in on season four, but certain things you're just not going to understand. So, once again, Lena Waif, appreciate you for this fucking show. This show is incredible. I love it. I'm a fucking fan. Cast is great. And it touches on things that, like, I, I, I'm I, not from Chicago. I'm from Oakland. But we have a we have a relationship. We have a correlation. And a lot of the shits that them, these boys are going through in the show, I've been through myself. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, once again, that's the shy. Y'all, y'all go check it out if y'all haven't seen it. If you have seen it, let me know down in the comments below. Hell, let me know if, if you could relate to it. Let me know if you have certain experiences from it. I love, I would love to hear it. You know, what I mean, you heard my experiences from it, and there's many more. I love to talk to y'all about this shit. You know what I mean? But anyway, 